Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah How do we know if we are being tested or if something is happening for our good and we don't understand or if we are just being punished? So you, you asked that last time, <laughs> same exact question. <laughs> Everything is a test, Everything's a test. Even that question for me is a test. So buy the meditation book inshaAllah, make your tafakkur, <laughs> meditate, yeah. Meditate so you can levitate. And every time we talk you have to think and meditate on that, sub on that subject and that talk. Don't let it to come and go because it proves then you're heedless. You have to go deep into the oceans, right? They give you a bait to catch you and you're supposed to make your tafakkur and contemplation to go deeper into that understanding that you're not going to achieve anything. You know with your wudu you wash and somebody come and watch you wash because how many times these, these outside imams they want to watch us wash as if you went this way or that way. You think that changes your darajat? This ridiculous uh, ideology of people or you wash inside and how pure is the inside and the heart and all of your faculties, are your eyes clean, are your ears clean, is your breath clean, is your intention clean, all of those. So zahiri people as if they're in a different religion and zahiriism can catch you in a moment. Catch you and make you to be proud of your actions and think your actions are superior to other people. When it doesn't change the color of your light, doesn't increase your love for Sayyidina Muhammad You think the argument between madhabs increases the love between Prophet No, that's the discipline on which to ride your horse, how to put your saddle and how to ride it. But that didn't get you your award, it didn't get you a rank with Allah And that's why awliya come and to teach us, these are not singing sessions, these are the exhibition of love for Prophet that they're verily witnessed by Allah and His angels because this is a command from Allah in Allahi wa malaikatu yusalloon ala nabi Means they are the. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Supreme crowds that they heard the call, they heard the command, and Allah and His angels are now witnessing, who now is praising upon my beloved one? No singing sessions. These are the sessions of ishq and muhabbat that their jins is completely changing. The Prophet shyness and love for his nation whom love him, how he looks to their soul and changes the colors of their soul and their emanation. And as a result Allah's pleased with them and they draw near to the Divine the Presence. <clears throat> when you understood that and really understood that and meditated on that, you can hear other talks and you see how ridiculous they are. Thinking that Allah's so involved in petty issues as if there's nothing to do up there. Like a traffic police, so how fast was it going? 35, are you sure it was 35? Maybe 37. 
this is like a traffic court up, up above. No, the greater, the greater reality and the greater benefit is to the soul and focusing on how to purify the soul, how to raise its status into the heavens inshaAllah. <clears throat> so it requires to contemplate in everything we do, every question we have. The question that was just asked, how does it relate to what we talked about? And based on what you heard from this talk, why can't you answer? If everything's about love, jinsa tool ka bi ishqihi, then what are Allah's going to, to test you with? Your jins, right? So you come as a material person with lots of jins, lots of goods. Well, Allah sends servant to you from unseen, start taking your goods and throwing them in the ocean. Because many people come and they lose their job, they lose their work because you value yourself based on your jins. Ooh, jins it ziyadah, you have lots of goods. And somebody from unseen come and start throwing them into the ocean, immediately your character change and everything about you change. Is that a test or is it a punishment? Well, it depends on how you feel. If you're happy with it, it was a test because Allah's good with you. If you feel like jumping in the ocean to retrieve it, then it was a punishment to you. So means if we understood the subject, these, these types of questions we can coordinate how to get there. I got to improve my goods, I have to improve my, my light and my soul, that's all that Allah is worried about or concerned about, Allah doesn't worry about it but concerned for your value. If your light is beatific and flowing with Muhammadan lights then what Allah cares about your jins? At that time He can open His whole kingdom to you and they will be under your feet. Mawlana Shah Naqshaban on entire villages his waqaf and his foundations were so huge. Ma'abda Khaliq al-Khujdawani's estates were huge in Bukhara and, and Samarkand. But at the beginning if you're coming with your jins and thinking your jins is your value, then they come and start throwing those jins in the ocean to see if you're happy or sad. So at that time they say they don't care if it all goes or it all comes. But if they achieve the color and the beatific frequency of the light and love of Prophet Allah can throw the entire creation at their feet and neither business nor trade divert them from the remembrance of Allah Sayyidina Ibrahim had 400 dogs, he's a shepherd. Now imagine how huge his herd is, 400 dogs and each of them with thick gold collars. His dogs had gold collars to show his wealth. And that's the story when Sayyidina Jibreel went to go test him. So, oh, this is beautiful sheep that you have because look at his dogs have gold collars, imagine the sheep what they had. And they said, do you want them? Said, what do you mean? Yes, SubhanAllah, Subhanun Qudusun Rabbuna Rabbun Malaikati wa Ruh. Make this zikr for me. He made the zikr for me. So, okay, one third of these sheep are now for you. And this story continues until he gave everything away to Sayyidina Jibreel. Sayyidina Jibreel said, Oh, I, I don't, what am I going to do with all these sheep? I just came to test you. Do you know who I am? He says, Of course, I know who you are. You can't veil yourself from me. But I gave them to you, I can't take them back, so the sheep are yours. Means that in our lives what gives us our value to Allah is this love for Prophet that changes us. Anyone who takes a path of love and moves towards that love, 
No doubt that that path of love will change them, especially if they love the right one and the only one to love is Sayyidina Muhammad And those whom represent that love that stand on the path and keep saying, come, come to this love. They shouldn't divert you to themselves or to something else, it's to come to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad especially last days this is a key to salvation inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Forgive my ignorance, my question is whether souls continue getting guidance in the grave and in barzakh and is it different than in dunya from their higher soul? Knowledge never stops, guidance never stops. That's why in khalwa and seclusions there's a continuous training. And we have many talks where the shaykhs they can reach to the people whom have passed away. If they have a permission at all shaykhs, the ones whom have a permission with Malik al Maut they can enter the graves of people and give them allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad and they grow very fast because they have no more nafs. So those are excellent recruits for following Sayyidina Mahdi and that was in the Lord of the Rings, is to go after the dead. So there are certain shaykhs that have the ability to go after the dead because they're excellent recruits. They have no more nafs and they can build themselves very fast. That's also the key to why in the last days there will be immense amounts of calamity. Because people will not reach the reality with their physicality. As a result of the calamity Allah grants them to be shaheed, that through a calamitous death they're granted martyrdom. As a result their souls become very powerful. At that time awliya will be present and immediately initiate them to Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. So nothing is wasted in Allah's way. You know you take the cantaloupe, you don't throw the skin away, something else will eat that. Nothing is wasted with Allah But what's important now is make sure that you build yourself now. So that uh, calamity doesn't have to take you away just to be with Sayyidina Mahdi InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I've been a Muslim now for nearly a year. Re- recently, whilst walking through a shopping center, a Christian woman came screaming at me, wanting to remove demons from me and praying to Christ that they're removed while screaming and yelling. I left the scene shaking at what just occurred. What is the best way to protect against this? I am sure she felt my energy. I was saying in my head, La ilaha illallah at the time. It's like she sensed me. What is this exactly? Yeah, I think the demons were in them because the light of Islam is a very powerful light. And that's why keep your head covered. Keep your taweez on, keep yourself always in wudu when you're outside and uh, people may give you looks and whatever they want and just we keep our way and keep going. But uh, when their devils are too strong then they have these types of reactions and excitements and just uh, try to avoid crazy people, become more and more like the bird box movie in which the frequencies are are too negative and too strong and people just can't control it and they're out being crazy with everyone. So as soon as there's a light on somebody then those devils and those people whom are occupied by these devils become very angered because the devil's burning from that energy of Islam. So they become more and more difficult to go places and to interact with people. So those, those types of things then are more limited and always careful that you have your wudu, you have your taweez, your head is covered and every day is like a spiritual battle going out. Look at the stores you don't have to guess too much, look at the stores they have entire satanic sections where satanic wardrobes, so they're not hiding. We said before the grey would vanish, 
we're now reaching that point. In the stores are all satanic images and the, these big leaders of them said, no they have to, they have to abide by the curriculum we give them otherwise they'll be thrown off of their board because their function is to corrupt society. They have a belief but for others they don't deserve a belief and that they should corrupt the belief of people. So that segment of society this is how they operate and they will take away the gray and it will be black and white those whom believe and those whom don't believe. And those whom believe should be based on love and muhabbat, good character, good manners inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah When Sayyidina Mahdi comes physically, will there be 124,000 awliya since you taught us he holds immense qudra and light? 124,000 awliya with Sayyidina Mahdi I would imagine that they would all be present to be with him he has seven wazirs, the 49 deputies, 50 nawab, each of them carrying one of the names of Allah and they're all from the 124,000 awliyaullah and this is the structure on top and then the base. And they would lend their support and be of service, those are the first to, to come to be of service inshaAllah. From Mudad, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad with Akhyar, Jinni wa Ins. They're not all just only humans, but from the rank of 124,000, they are from the jinn and from different categories that we know and of which we don't know their type of race. We said the Dajjal is coming and they're all jinn. And that's why you're seeing more and more of the aliens, more and more of these shaitans showing themselves. Because when they begin to expose fully, they have like sections in the store now all satan, all images of shaitan. So means they're not hiding themselves, they become more and more bold until they appear and appear to mankind and, and make their appearance to mankind to confuse people. And a great fitna would open upon this earth. And the only protection people have is the love for Allah which its key is the love for Sayyidina Muhammad Jinsituka bi ishqihi InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, is muraqaba similar to astral travel? I don't know what people understand of astral travel, that they travel through their mind. Again everyone has a different understanding and you know variations of new age explanations. But muraqaba is to contemplate, it's not so much only the travelling but to contemplate oneself and to understand the body, its limitation and open up the reality of the soul and the heavenly world, the world of light. Making the connection with the souls in the world of light, connecting with the guides in the world of light, connecting with Prophet in the world of light. Those are the realities that Allah wanted for us by coming to the physical world was only a means in which to connect with our spiritual reality so that we would continue to be guided on this physical experience. When we left that we became relying upon physical, right? So the du'a heals you. Why does du'a heal you? Because it's sound and it's vibration. Every du'a has a frequency and a sound. So when they believe and the hearts are sincere, they begin to make that du'a, the frequency and the sound and the energy from the hearts of people change other people and these were the realities of light and energy. 
But when people forgot those practices they relied more on pills and medicines and everything else. So now to take ourselves back to the natural order of our existence. What we live now is not natural and we have to go back to our natural reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, in day-to-day -day activities as students, can we adopt mindfulness or should we just make our focus on durood and salawats? They the same. <coughs> mindfulness is to keep your focus, keep your attention, make sure you have good character, be conscious of Allah be conscious of the love for Prophet That's why Jinsutu is the whole caption is that my value is based on what? So everything I do is going to say, is that increasing my value or lowering my value? So then I make my durood, I make my, my dhikr, my awrads and my connections and at the same time being mindful of my ability to be good and make the right choices every time, as many times as we possibly can and go about our lives. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there anything we can do if a really good friend is choosing a different path? <laughs> Just say ahlan wa sahlan. <clears throat> Everybody has a path in which their heart is drawn to. So we can't save other people, we really have to be busy saving ourselves. So that's the importance is I have to save myself, I have to do my service and send out my articles and, and do my posting and everything that the shaykh has asked of me. If I save myself, draw myself closer to the reality with my tafakkur and meditation and all my practices, what happens? As I draw closer to that reality then that reality reflects through me more. How do people benefit? By you going after them or you coming after your reality? If you go after them you've been diverted from reaching your reality. Now your physicality is just grabbing them and talking to them, come on you have to listen to me. And this all your brain to their brain, you lost your objective. But if you ignore that and move towards your reality Means now your soul has more and more power, more and more power. You begin to pray for those people. The, the light of your reality is emanating around those whom love you and whom you love. If you stay connected to the core, as soon as you disconnect from the core to run after people then shaitan has now got you in the wrong direction. So that there was an example where a student was <clears throat> he was in the zikr and the zikr starting and another student is driving past the house and notices that a fire is now starting in that house and he runs to the zikr and tells the student that a fire is in the house starting in your house. And the student ignores him and continues with the zikr and his connection. And the majlis of the zikr ends and they find out that as a result the fire went out. And the discussion with the shaykh is that had ye gotten up and went back everything would have been burnt because he was trying to resolve the issue instead of his reliance upon Allah these are for higher level people, entry level people can't do these types of things, they don't have the belief. It's like, قُلْ يَا نَحْرُ كُنِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Everyone thinking they're like Sayyidina Ibrahim and they'll jump in a fire and it won't burn, no it will burn you very bad because you don't have that level of belief. But somebody whom has a strong level of belief understood that when they're in the zikr, they're in the remembrance of Allah Allah is the best of those whom to turn your affairs over. The Ya Rabbi I'm remembering you, remember me means 
this fire and my difficulties you can only put them out. And Allah will extinguish him, send help for them, everything. But when you leave trying to rely upon Allah and say, no, no, I, this I don't really believe, let me go home and now fix this, then that's when your test was a, a fail. By the time you probably got home everything had burnt. So these testings and these levels of belief Allah will test the servant. And this is what is the real tawakkul when people say, rely on Allah only. Yeah, but these are only for the people of tariqah that understood this level of belief and they live by that level of belief. That if they're busy with Allah and the love of Allah, love of Prophet then Allah is telling to them, I'm the best of those to turn your affair over to. How many people would do that? They have to be the people of certainty. Most people will get up and try to resolve it themselves and say, oh this is like tie the camel and say, no absolutely not. That the remembrance of Allah is much higher than the majlis of Allah and your position and connection with Allah everything will be resolved and Allah will test you. So this, this is many times this has happened in people's lives. They go somewhere and say, oh snowstorm is coming, say, okay but the same person who brought me here will take me home, otherwise why he didn't want me to come for zikr? And they go and everything is resolved by the time they have to go home. So you know, Allah has many ways to show the servant, now, this will be scary, this will be horrible, people say, don't go, don't do it. So, my faith and trust is in Allah He'll resolve everything and they will be tested in that level of belief and that level of way. And so that's why they gain a sense of yaqeen and certainty that other people can't understand, other people can't understand their life and say, so why do you operate like that? No, because their life is based on relying upon Allah Regardless of what anyone says or what anyone feels, they've been tested, they know their level of testing and they, they, they know their level of belief in Allah InshaAllah. Shall we break for Salat al Maqrib and then come back for the Khatmi Khawjigan inshaAllah. Subhanahu wa bika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.